start after the start. At this time, can sergeants please start their recordings? Sergeant, Sergeant Leonardo, you may begin your opening statement. Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council remote hearing on the Committee on Finance. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrant or silent mode. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Okay, good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Committee on Finance. I'm Council Member Daniel Drum and I'm the Chair of the Committee. Uh, we have been joined by the Public Advocate, Jemani Williams and Council Members Koslowitz, Adams, Chin, Gradenchik, Lansman, Perkins, Powers, Yeager, Van Bremer, Matteo, Ayala, Rosenthal, Moya, Lewis, Jonai, Amphrey Samuel, Cumbo and Gibson. Today, the committee will be voting on nine items, which include proposed intro 1952A, sponsored by Council Member Gibson, which would require the administration to create an online database to track the funds in connection with COVID-19 pandemic. Intro, uh, proposed intro 1964A and 1974A, sponsored by Council Member Margaret Chin and the public advocate, Jamani Williams, respectively, which would authorize the council to adopt interest rates targeting certain property owners who were financially impacted by COVID-19, as well as the accompanying resolution setting the authorized rates. Three resolutions relating to the Banking Commission's recommendations on banking on interest rates, and two resolutions relating to interest rates targeting certain property owners who were financially impacted by COVID-19 and an Article 11 property tax exemption. Proposed intro 1952A would require the mayor to establish and maintain a public online searchable and interactive database to help track the funds appropriated to and used by the council for COVID-19, excuse me, used by the city for COVID-19 spending. The database would include data on the city spending related to COVID-19 funds. The database would cover agency expense and capital expenditures, city procurement contracts, and grants or loans associated with COVID-19 funds. I'm going to invite Council Member Gibson uh, to speak in support of the bill. Council Member Gibson. Good morning, Chair Drum, and thank you to members of the Finance Committee. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak this morning about intro 1957, sorry, 1952A, which is a bill that would require the city of New York to create a public database on its website that would track all expenditures of federal, state, and local funds for addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, including agency spending, city procurement contracts, grants, as well as loans. The structure of this legislation was really inspired by Superstorm Sandy and the tracking system that was applied in Local Law 140 of 2013. The COVID-19 expenditures, any expense or capital expenditure by a city agency for the services, goods or materials programs or construction paid for with any COVID-19 funds provided that such terms shall only include personnel expenditures that are tracked as such for reimbursement. Uh, we also are looking at a wide range of participating agencies, including SBA, FEMA, uh, as well as the State Health Department, New York City, h, h the Department of Ed, SBS, NYPD, OMB, DCAS, just to name a few. The mayor will create and maintain a public online searchable and interactive database on New York City's website that will include summaries of all the management of COVID-19 funds the data included will also be available in a format that is easily able to read and download and available without any registration requirement or restrictions in its use. Uh, this bill is really important during 
this season as we are dealing with the pandemic and we are reopening the city of New York. And we believe it will serve as a powerful tool of not only accountability, but transparency to ensure that resources are reaching the hardest hit communities across our city. We know that thousands of New Yorkers have lost their battle to the COVID-19 pandemic. And many New Yorkers are New Yorkers of color. They are older New Yorkers, 60 and older, and many of them had underlying health conditions. So we wanna make sure there is equity in how we are making investments in communities of color and immigrant communities. And we must make sure to do everything in our power to protect vulnerable and marginalized New Yorkers. It is our fundamental duty to ensure that we are using this money wisely and effectively and efficiently. And this COVID-19 spending tracking database will really provide a lot of information that we need now, as well as moving forward. I wanna thank my co-sponsor, Council Member Mark Traeger, who really did a lot to make this bill happen. Obviously, since his district of Southern Brooklyn was so Im much impacted by Superstorm Sandy, I wanna thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his leadership, Chair Danny Drum, all the members of this committee, and certainly the legislative division. Thank you to Rebecca Chasen and Noah Brick and everyone at the finance division for all of your work. And I ask all of my colleagues to vote aye on this important piece of legislation related to tracking COVID-19 spending in our city. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Gibson. Now turning to the two bills authorizing the council to adopt interest rates targeting certain property owners who were financially impacted by COVID-19. Proposed intro 1964A, sponsored by council member Chin, would authorize the city council to adopt a 7.5% late payment interest rate available to small rental and commercial buildings that pay their property taxes on a semi-annual basis and have been adversely impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. The lowered interest rate would be available between July 1 and October 15. These properties would otherwise be subject to an 18% interest rate. So the bill will provide these small property owners meaningful relief to address the cash flow issues that many of them are facing. Next, we have proposed intro 1974A, sponsored by the public advocate, which would authorize the council to adopt a 0% interest rate for late payment on property taxes due July 1st. This lower rate would be available to COVID-19 impacted homeowners who pay their taxes on a quarterly basis and have incomes below $150,000. The lower interest rate would be applicable through September 30th. In short, this bill will allow the, the council to provide moderate interest rate, excuse me, moderate income homeowners who have been impacted by COVID-19 more time to pay their property taxes with no penalty. In addition to the bills, the committee will be voting on the two resolutions to set the interest rates as authorized by the legislation. I will now turn it over to Council Member Chin and the public advocate for their remarks on the bills. Council Member Chin. Thank you, Chair Drum. Uh, and thank you to the member of the Finance Committee. Today, we'll be voting on my legislation, Intro 1964-H, which will reduce the interest rate on non-payment of property taxes on July 1st for certain small property owners affected by COVID-19. This will apply to properties with an assessed value between 250,000 and 750,000 and have experienced a 50% income decline between March 7 and June 30th compared to last year. It will also apply to properties with an assessed value over 250,000, contains no more than 30 residential units of which at least 50% are rent regulated who have experienced a 20% income decline in that period. Small property owners of legacy tenement building in Chinatown and in Low East Side have been languishing for some relief, any kind of relief from the city since the brink of the shutdown. These are low to mid-sized buildings with a majority rent regulated residential tenant that have been passed by family members to family members for generations. 
or in Chinatown, managed and owned by family association that have shaped the culture of this community from the beginning. Many of these owners have had to deal with flows of unfair property tax assessment system and high operating expenses and are not interested in selling their buildings off uh, to these uh, speculators. Now they're being forced to pay their property tax deadline by July 1st, even though their commercial tenants, their main source of income have had to shut their doors overnight. To the owners who have helped their small businesses, tenants adjust, I thank you. Our government has for too long turned a blind eye to the constituency's unique challenges and call for relief. Today, we are taking a first but an important step to offer some help. I know this wasn't an easy fight. So I thank the entire committee on finance team, including Latanya McKinney, Rebecca Chasen, Emery Eddy, uh, Ray Majeski, Andrew Wilbert, and Noah Brick, as well as my legislative director, uh, Marion Guerra, for never giving up, man. Those administrators. The administration was giving us such a hard time. And I wanna thank the speaker, Chair Drum, and uh, Jason for your incredible leadership. The fight continue. And I hope all my colleagues will vote yes on the bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Council Member Chin. Let's now hear from the public advocate, Jamani Williams. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair Drum and members of the Committee on Finance for holding a vote today uh, on mine and other bills. Uh, today, committee will vote on my bill, intro number 1974A, which provides economic relief for certain property tax owners who have been affected by COVID-19. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to the New York State Department of Labor, 1.5 million New Yorkers received unemployment benefits in May, which does not include the thousands of pending applications. The economic impact that COVID-19 has had on the city and our residents can be felt and seen everywhere. While we enter the final days before the budget must be adopted, what must be central in these negotiations is the need to ease a financial burden on New Yorkers by investing in vital social supports. Intro number 1974A balances the need for the city to collect property taxes to pay for those uh, social supports, which is our biggest revenue source, while extending economic relief to those who need it the most. Intro number 1970A defers July's property tax payment to October giving New Yorkers more time to pay their tax liability with no interest applied. If property owners still struggle to make their payments by October, they can then apply for the city's property tax aid program, which provides an installment agreement. The property tax deferrals apply to residential properties with an assessed value, not market value, but assessed value of 250,000 or less, where the property is the owner of a primary residence, property owners with combined income up to $150,000, property owners who have been adversely affected by COVID-19, including having been diagnosed with or a family member diagnosed with COVID-19, experienced symptoms of COVID-19 and sought a medical diagnosis, lost the primary source of income due to COVID-19 between March 7th and June 30th, 2020, which continued for at least one month. I'd like to recognize and thank the mayor's office for helping come to a necessary agreement. Uh, and of course, the Council Finance Department, Noah Brick, Rebecca Chasen for their work on the bill, and my staff, Director of Legislation, Casey Addison, Legislative Associates, Annika Michelle and Brandon Jordan, First Deputy Public Advocate Nick Smith, and Chief Deputy Public Advocate for Policy, <coughs> Veronica Avis, and my entire policy division. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody uh, needs to mute themselves. There's a lot, there's some background noise. Please check to be sure that you are muted. Thank you. Next, we have the five resolutions that would set certain interest rates for fiscal 2021. Every year, the Banking Commission provides recommendations to the council relating to the discount received by property owners who pay their property taxes early and the interest rates paid by property owners who pay their property taxes late. For fiscal 2021, the Banking Commission has made the following recommendations. A one half of 1% discount rate for those who pay their property taxes early. A 3.5% interest rate for the first quarter of fiscal year 2021 
and a 5% uh, for the second, third, and fourth quarters of fiscal 2021 for the late payment of property taxes on properties with an assessed value of $250,000 or less, and an 18% interest rate for fiscal 2021 for the late payment of property taxes on properties with an assessed value of, mo of more than $250,000. After careful consideration of the Banking Commission's submission to the council, the council is recommending that the interest rates be approved as set forth by the Banking Commission's recommendations. Lastly, we have the Article 11 property tax exemption. 3415 Knott's Place and Council Member Cohen's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 25 units of affordable, affordable rental housing. The council member is supportive of the project. So those are all of today's items. Are there any questions? Okay, I will now ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk. Roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Combo. Councilmember Cumbo? I'll call Billy. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. Rosenthal. You know, with congratulations to the finance staff and the bill sponsors, especially Council Member Gibson, your legislation is um, exactly the transparency that this city needs. And you can tell by reading through the committee report how hard the staff worked on it. So I really want to thank you and congratulate you. And with that, I'm voting aye on all. Van Bramer. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. Aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Combo. Jonai. Badio. Um, I'm going to, uh, because I think some of these rates should be lower and actually zeroed out, I'm going to vote no on 1347, 1348, 1349, and I and the rest. 
Uh, yeah, I'm on. All you got to do is just, yeah. Council member Jonai. I on all. I vote I on all. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cumbo? All items in today's finance committee have been adopted by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of three pre-considered resolutions in regarding to setting the fiscal in interest rates, which have been adopted by the committee, 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. I guess we're going to now adjourn this meeting, uh, and I'll do that. Uh, saying that it's 11.39 a.m. in the morning and this meeting is now adjourned.